We're getting set for, I guess you can say, number one contenders week on Schmodan this week. Before we get to the Inner Geekdom Tournament Finals on Friday, we have another big match in store and it's to determine uh, one of the participants uh, for the Movie Trivia Schmodown Championship that has kind of gone through a little bit of limbo ever since uh, Sam Levine shockingly relinquished the championship, uh, basically the first airing after the collision. We know that William the Beast Bibiani is going to be in that match based on his victory against Jeff Snyder uh, in a match that happened before the collision. Now we're going to find out who the other person is going to be in a match between Mark Andreco after winning a triple threat match at said collision event, and Ethan Irwin, who has been one of the more dominant players to come in Schmodown in a very, very long time. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see who comes out on top. Are we going to get this much-anticipated match between William Bibiani and Ethan Irwin? Or are we going to get one of the most anticipated rematches in Schmodown history in Bibiani and Draco 2, which is still considered by many one of the best Schmodown matches ever? So... It's Ethan Irwin, Mark Andreco. Who's going to get to the Movie Trivia Schmodown Championship match? Let's find out now on JTH Reacts to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Out of time, so say goodbye. What is yours? Now is mine. Welcome back. Okay, so I'm excited on a couple of reasons uh, for this match. Obviously, number one, it's Ethan Irwin, uh, Mark Andreco for the opportunity to play William Bibiani. So that's all well and good. Uh, also, this is the match where my uh, Patreon wedge is going to be used. As far as I know, it's going to be Tim Burton. I was not told that it wouldn't work, so uh, I'm going to go in expecting it to be that. So uh, I was I was told ahead of time that that's this is the match it was going to be. Brian actually has uh, started. Uh, informing us ahead of time of like what matches are certain stuff is going to get used for uh, just in case you know things don't work out or need to say um, as far as who I think is going to win I'm pulling for Mark Andreco but obviously I think Ethan Irwin is going to be uh, I'll, I'll say he's a slight favorite I don't think it's going to be nearly as lopsided as some people will think it is um, obviously, Ethan has been, you know, running rough shot over a lot of great players. Uh, he did great in the free for all, um, as uh, Brad Gilmore would say. He did okay. He did okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I'm expecting uh, Ethan Irwin to win, but I'm rooting like crazy for Mark Andreco to win, simply because I have wanted Bibiani versus Andreco two for so 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 long. And uh, so, yeah, let's see if it actually happens. Here's to a good match. Now that that's taken care of and the pre-cheers uh, um, ceremony is done, let's do this in three, two, and one. Shirewolves owe us lunch money. Oh, wait, I did that in the last reaction. I am so repetitive and dumb. I wonder what Inman's gonna come out to at the live event. Will he, will he come out to Star Trek? Will he come out to a comic book? Will he come out as Kirk? Will he come out as Picard? Will he come out as Spock? Will he come out as uh, anybody else that has anything to do with any of his strengths and category? I think I narrowed it down to pretty much everything then. Buy ah, your tickets now! Koi Koi Jandrew can't even get on the poster. I mean, he's the manager and still can't get on it. That's a shame. Brian Ward, get to work on that. Koi deserves respect, damn it. One name to look at. This is my pick to be the standout rookie, Ethan Irwin. Remember that name, Ethan Irwin. 
we shall be remembering. Silver Pictures, and I'm here to finally, at long last, compete in Schmodown. Any time to come out to turtle power. Of course, any chance that I can just do my brutal parody too. One by one by one, sometimes by twos. They're saying he could be the next Merle. I might have even said that at one point. I mean, he's got those type of skills. Matt Lucas and Ben Lucas. And oh. your winner, Ethan. Simon but, Pegg. Uh, and but Nick no, it's Ross. awesome, and I I can't wait. I feel like now that that I was the match of the year. I still stand match. by that. I, I've just got to keep moving up the ladder. Love Rachel and uh, Mara to death, but I still like that match a little more. Will play Ethan Irwin. Mark Andreco, I think, is a quiet three and two. I think he's had some he's had some tough losses. Arguably one of the best matches of all time against Bibiani. Mark Andreco arguably has shown up and played his best. The more people are on the table, the better Andreco seems to play. Ah, oh, random Jeff Schneider appearance. Five, four, three, two, one. I feel bad for Janine. She was uh, she was really demoralized when that happened. You could tell Mark was uh Mark was not satisfied with that performance, even in a victory. I'm a little bit nervous, but everybody has their weaknesses. Even Achilles had a heel, and I'm gonna find yours. So it's gonna be bloody, but I think I'm gonna be left standing. That may be the case, but. As, uh, as I said when uh, I went up against McQueen, yeah, I, you, you know a lot. Although I will say, it was a low blow for Mark to call him the pizza guy. That's Matt knows. Everybody knows that. Come on, Mark. Oh, don't, don't flip people off. You're a good guy now. Why do y'all show that picture? That's not nice. Who was the editing team for this one? You're supposed to get people behind Mark Andreco. What do y'all do? No, you don't do that. <coughs> Big mistake. Big. Huge. That's all right. I still support Mark Andreco. And it's not just because I'm an admin on his fan page. Hello, Mark. Hello, Christian. The gang's all here. We have today. This is one of those matchups you love to salivate. The stakes have never been juicier because Andreco is going up against. I'm salivating, but it's not because really of the match. It's just because you know I'm thirsty. Mike Kalinowski has been causing chaos, right? Corruption with a. Even in a match, got nothing to do with him. We gotta bring up Mike Kalinowski. Sam and I sat down and we talked for a bit, and Sam made the decision that he was stepping away from the game. Obviously, he was going to be around to help out. He dropped both belts. He's no longer the singles champion. He's no longer the team's champion, and that put the singles and Linus up for grabs. Is that? Bibiani was supposed to challenge Sam, mm -hmm. but when Sam left, mm -hmm. left Bibiani was mm -hmm. the only one to challenge. We knew Irwin and Andreka would be playing for a t for a contender spot. But now they have someone to play. They're going to be playing Bibiani. Either way, can you imagine Ethan Irwin versus Bibiani to where you had the free-for-all battle between these two? Take that aside. Mark Andreco and Bibiani had arguably the best match in Schmodown history in their debut. Bibiani broke the record. We got it got a perfect, a near perfect round. We got a perfect round, just one multiple choice. But he, and Andreco was on fire. Any one of those matches for the title would be. Crazy. Yeah, look, we're spoiled either way. I'm actually glad Sam Levine went to the villages and retired. I hope you're doing well at Bingo. Oh, right don't, now, don't, don't say that, Mark. Don't make Linus cry. Like Ethan Irwin. He's right. the real 
wild card to me between him and Andreco. We know what Andreco brings to the table, but a lot like Mark Andreco, who started off so red hot in this league when he first came out of the gate, then he had some stumbles. Ethan Irwin, we're still waiting to see if he is truly a cyborg of movie trivia or he has some cinematic lapses yet to be discovered. Will a Fisher appear today? Yeah, that's a great point, though, because Mark Andreco at this point is a veteran of the league. He debuted in 2016. Ethan is in his fourth match, but he's fresh to the league. He's a superstar already. The fans love him. The competitors are scared of him. I mean, he is he is somebody's three and zero. He has had amazing matches. He started off beating Yolanda Machado, and then his second match was a was a masterpiece in his win against uh, the professor. Which, Juan if you Harris, didn't remember so that, the Schmodown trivia Schmodown reminded you of that. Um, former partner, and then now here he is, Mark Andreco. This is a big test for Ethan because Mark Andreco is that good, but the question, like you said, is Ethan the real deal we find out today in this number one contender match against Mark Andreco, who is a solid, solid competitor. So many questions. Did Andreco shout before the match? Will Ethan Irwin be sporting his trademark producerial blue button-down shirt? Is anybody going to make guacamole out of these avocados on my shirt, Christian? So many. Will questions. Ethan come out we to Turtle Power, or will he come out to the Ninja Rat? And if he does, let's this not dance to it, please. This has been a fantastic year for the Fife Club. We had both Rachel and Clark in number one contender matches. Both of them had a shot at the belt. I've had two competitors have a crack at getting that championship, and frankly, third time's the charm. So this is a number one contender match. It's myself against Mark the Android and Draco. And look, by the way, I was going to put it out there. I like Andreco, okay? I've hired the guy to write for me in the past. I think he's great. I think he's very smart. He knows his stuff, but guess what? I know a lot more. Ethan is a really, really good player. He's like, he's like a, a shark in Jaws, just... He has one purpose, and that is to destroy and rend and tear. So, uh, you know, I hope you know. Part of me hopes I destroy him and channel my inner Andrew Guy versus Merle, or uh, or I just don't lose by too much. So, uh, yeah, and there's and there's no pressure from the preamble she just gave me. <laughs> I have come in here and single-handedly, just from the beginning of this year, torn through this league, and now I'm going to take him down, and after that, Bibiani. And guess what? Then the title's mine. And that's, I think, what we've all been talking about this whole time. Sam Levine even told me that one of the reasons he quit was because he knew he'd have to face me. Knowledge isn't everything in this league. There's a lot of it's a lot of a personality game. There's a lot of psychological warfare that goes on. There's lots of you know feuding and that sort of thing. There's a lot of psyching out. And thus far, he's been very focused and very internalized. So we'll see if the knowledge can get him through all the way. Because you know you got to get a thick skin in this. Because we're we're all we all want the belts. Look, I know that there are people who think that I don't have enough personality and that I, I, I don't have enough character. I'm not, a, I'm not a face. I'm not a heel. That's nonsense. I have tons of personality, but it doesn't matter for this game. There's only one thing that matters, and that is what's in here. Ethan, you are a very worthy competitor. I am a little nervous, a little humbled before you, but the, the fate of the wheel, there are some categories I know that you don't, so uh, it's up to the gods to decide. And Draco. I'm going to annihilate you. I, I feel bad about it, I guess, a little bit because we've worked together and I respect you, but you're going down. There's going to be nothing left but just a pile of Android parts on the ground. And I'm sorry to have to do this to you, but it's what's going to happen, and you guys are going to watch me. Quick, someone needs to get Sam Levine on the phone and find out if he did he quit because Ethan Irwin was coming. That sounds like something Steve Austin said to Bret Hart. The best in the league. He said he even went as much to say that. The reason he left was because he was scared of Stone Cold Steve Austin. The moxie on Ethan Irwin, but I also like Mark Andreco, where he is how much he wants to play Bibiani again. He wants that. He wants that match. He says he knows he can beat Bibiani. With a few choice words and a couple of phrases, I talk. Bread into coming back, not because I liked him, but because I wanted to whip his ass in front of the world and make his life a living hell, and that's exactly what I've done. That was something. Good times. You have Mark and Draco, comic book movies, musicals, and thinking his competitors are throwing keys at LA. I need a I need a story about that. Where, where, I need to hear that story now. 
Irwin, Ethan Irwin, whose strengths are Arnie and Slime. Luigi's got being it. pissed off when called a valet. Hmm. Pissed off when someone calls him a valet. Will anybody know or pizza guy? You're the guy who both deliver my pizza. About to find out. Christian, I am mentally prepared. Are you physically set? Oh my God, it's fantastic. Oh, there all it right, is. There we go. We're all, all right. begging for that one. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the movie. Movie trivia showdown. Yay! Three rounds to a finish. In a number one contender match. Introducing first. Representing the Fight Club. With a record of four wins. Two defeats. He is the number three ranked contender. Mark is a very quiet for him too. Many people forget how good he is record wise. Coach Rudolph and a hero was born in this day and age. You could ask for more. The weather was bad. Trouble was terrible. All the elves in Santa are earphones. They can't brave the storm that's going to hit this Christmas morn. This is serious, so we need a savior. Go find our hero. Tell him we need a favor. Call Rudolph the reindeer. Go and make haste. Tell him better hurry up. There's no time to waste. That's the song he's been coming out to. It's been good for him since his first. I'm getting better at doing it every single time. Every single, every other time he comes out to it, I, I'm ready and and I and I, and I f up, screw up, and I made the song. Oh, Shredder. In round number one, where was I? The field is going to hear eight questions from eight different corners of the movie trivia galaxy. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. As soon as we ask you the question up here at the answer desk, please write down your best attempt at a correct answer. Best attempt at an answer. Well, that's for me. They'll probably know it. Best attempt for me. I will remind the competitors but of your my best answer is usually involved wrong note match. If you or next question again you want to buy or time, use I have no idea e rules and you also each have one challenge if you don't like the way a question was ruled use your challenge but use it wisely back to you Christian George wake up I'm there I'm there all right here we go so Ethan are you ready to go always be closing and Mark are you ready to go Let's get it over with. And <laughs> let's get ready to schmooze out! Yay! In the words of Mills Lane, let's get it on! Number one in the realm of action adventure. Action adventure. Action adventure. Is Alan Grant in Jurassic Park. Right, just, Alan Grant. We're just out here throwing the frisbee around yeah. early in the match. Give, give him something to do. <laughs> okay, this is, this is to make sure your markers work. Yes. Yeah. Oh, where's his name? Oh, Five, oh, oh, boy. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Pen down, please. And Ethan. Sam Neill. Correct. Mark. I completely oh. blank. Didn't have it. Wow. Oh. So, all right, no, we Mark is like me. He <laughs> <laughs> said Jeff Goldblum. What can I say except I'm real dumb? Your question this is, losing is my so one true specialty. Impossible film starring Tom Cruise came out in what year? Well, he's been putting up. Both had it. I look at this more as an Emilio Estevez franchise. That's true. Five. <laughs> uh, four. He's wait. back in a big way in the new one, anyway. Two, one, ten, ten, one. Ninety-seven. Ninety-six. That's correct, Ethan. Oh shit. It. Okay. Next question. All right, e Ethan. <coughs> you were right. I remember that. Next question. I was old then. Dramas. Dramas is the next category. John Wayne, Henry Fonda, and Sean Connery star together in which war film? Ooh, we're a long way from that first Jurassic Park question. I huh? know. Oh. Five. Four, three, two, it's not hunt for one. Red Mark Andreco. Guns of Navarone. It's incorrect, Ethan. Longest day. That's correct. 
time. Oh, I never okay. heard of that, so I don't feel bad about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever heard of Guns of Alvaron. Maybe next. Ethan can Guns of Navarone. Navarone. All right, your next question comes from the world of animated movies. These are movies that are drawn by hand or on a computer. Your question is, Henry Selick directed what 2000s stop-motion animated film? Well, uh, ah, repeat it. Five, no, nope. four, three, two, no one. Ethan. Coraline? Correct. Mark. Coraline. Got it. He Coraline. got it. No. Four, two. The four guns two. of Coraline. Well, so much for me knowing my animated <laughs> shit. Fantasy sci fi. <laughs> Who plays Miracle Max in The Princess Bride? <laughs> See, but th again, everybody's. Yeah. I've seen that movie yeah. once because Bonnie Somerville forced me. Five, against my will. Four. Three. I didn't enjoy it. Stop it. Two. One. Pen Can I repeat the question? Yep. I don't think this is right. Who plays Miracle Max in The Princess Bride? Anyway, you have to say. I don't Five, know if he's even in this movie right four, now. Four, I think he is. Three, I think I've heard he's two. Yes. One. Mark Andreco. Wallace Shawn. Incorrect. Ethan? Billy Crystal. Correct. One okay, point. and it is... Five to two, and Christian, it is inconceivable that already <laughs> Ethan Irwin... Oh, an, an inconceivable joke. Knew that was coming. Category, and this is in the world of comedies, ba ha ha ha. What U.S. city... Comedy. Are the Me. Visiting the end. ...for the majority of the hit film Girls Trip. Caught up on that movie. Enjoyed that movie. Oh, it's a snare. Five. Tiffany Haddish. Four, a star is born. Three. Two, it's Las Vegas, one, isn't it? Ethan Irwin. New Orleans. Correct, Mark. New Orleans, oh. more specifically, Essence Fest. Well that's done, right, that's, that's right. right. <laughs> so it, yeah, it was six, uh, three. not six, as three. easy as it was. Work that way. Six, three, next question here. Hard one, I think I got one right. Maybe. Now I don't even think I got one right. Features which kind of classic horror creature? You ever afraid of the dark when you were a kid? Huh? Were you afraid of the Whoa. dark? But accurate. I don't I can't hear with all the jokes. Afraid, afraid of the dark? Did you ever Five. think there was something in your closet under Four. the bed? No. Three. Last there was time. something in my Two. closet, not anymore. Pens <laughs> 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 down. I'll be opening for Mark Ellis uh, in San Diego Comic Con. And Billy Crystal was <laughs> Mark Andrick. Vampire. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Ethan. Vampire. You got it. All right. So seven of course. four. I had zombie. Though, if he gets this right, he has scored a perfect round. I got. I got to get a perfect yeah, round here. here. Ethan may be winning, perfect but Mark round Andrew of the jokes, the infidelity. Waiting to the little ones. Your last question. It's 2018, guys. You, you know what's up. It is a Patreon <laughs> question. The following question comes to you from our buddy and Patreon supporter Jake Hammer. Thank you, Jake, Jake Hammer. Hammer. This Hammer. I think this is like his fourth question he's asked. Thank you, Jake for supporting the show and for making that ninja the hammer draft. hammer the hammer 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 of jake choosing coming of age ooh, ooh. his question is michael Caine. <laughs> ethan like that's a category Duval play eccentric uncles to a boy named walter in what film i think we both have this one uh, i am an uncle do you consider me more michael Caine or more Five. robert duvall i don't know four Three. Our interplay has never Two. been that. Plot sounds One. familiar. You sound don't know the movie. Secondhand Lions. Correct. And Drake. Secondhand Lions. Got it. Ethan and Erwin yeah. have scored a perfect round. That's right. So with that, there's going to be a bonus question for only Ethan here. Ethan, you don't need to write it down. You oh. just need to answer this question. Here's your bonus I think I got a big fat zero on that. Who directed three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri? Martin McDonough. For one point. Ethan uh, Irwin goes up. Yet. Oh boy! And now round number two comes in. It's the wheel round. Mark and Drake are having a nice round with five points. He's got five Ethan, points. Ethan hits the nine five, and here we go with round number two. Round number two, Mark. How does it work? In round number two, it is also known as the wheel round, the wheel of fate, destiny, perhaps justice. Each competitor is going to get a spin at that there wheel. Whatever category you spin contains four questions from that world of movie trivia. Each question is worth two points. Okay. Okay, so Tim Burton was the uh, the category that I put on here. In round two. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us. That's what I asked. We'll find out if it's actually on there. Possible answers, one of which is correct. If you get that one, it is worth just one point. Uh, because Ethan Irwin is in a command. Actually, a little surprise. Ethan ran away with it as early as he did. He gets to choose. Is he going to spin the wheel first or defer to the android? I'm going to go first and get the first. All right, so All right. Ethan is going to hit the wheel Taking here. The keys to his own ride. Oh. Keeping the valet jokes going. Christian okay. and I have the deck. See Tim Burton on there. 
Well, hopefully you won't pull Snyder Mark. There are two wheel slices that are sponsored by two of our patrons right now. They are Tim Burton and Action Adventure Movies. Tim Burton and Action Adventure Movies. I don't remember. Brian showed everybody's name. Uh-oh. Action Adventure. You gonna stay with Action Adventure? Hey! Someone got a Patreon wish. Adventure. And that is supported by our buddy Lance Door. Knock, knock, That's right, Lance Door. Congratulations, Lance. I remember. I've never seen your name now. Supporting the show, Lance Door, big fan of yours as well. All right, That's all right. At least somebody got their name mentioned. In Action Adventure. Be a cold day in hell if mine ever gets mentioned. Father, Lord Richard Croft, in the first Tomb Raider film with Angelina Jolie. John Boyd. Two points. Next one. Who plays the I think that question's been asked before. I'm trying to remember. The name sounded familiar. Five, four, Eugene Levy. Incorrect. Oh. To the steal. Uh oh. Big steal here, Christian. If we can pull it off. Bumbling oh. cop. Five, um, four. Steve Martin. Looking for David Allen mm. Greer. David Allen oh, Greer. Great on him. Right. You know what? Even Will Poulter. Oh, that's okay. a big miss there. David Allen. Hard to use that. Greer. Yeah, I know. I'm Greer. TV show called Dag. It was yeah. a wonderful program. Oh, Dag. Right. Yes. <laughs> Question number three. Who plays the CIA operative Dylan in 1987? Carl Weathers. Three, two points. <laughs> Uh, Ethan is back after that rare misstep. Oh, Ethan. In what Stallone film does the main villain continuously call Stallone's character Pig? Oh, that's, uh, that's Cobra. In the final scene. Cobra. Two points. Yay! I finally got question right. Yippee for me! On the wheel. Crime is a disease. <laughs> is knowledge and meet the cure. Ethan Irwin, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and here goes and Draco. And uh, Come on. Uh, Draco needs a big round. <laughs> yeah. What an opportunity he had. <laughs> Tim Burton. Tim Burton. Come on, guys. I'd like to get Tim Burton. Please. John Carpenter. All right, here we go. And now it's not like his uh his his horror movies. Tim Burton, Tim Burton, please. Come on. Uh oh. Tim Burton. Yay! Got it. Tim Burton movies, and uh, that's very interesting. You know why, Christian? Because that's the other. This is the first time in the history of this moment, I believe, that the both both Patreon slices were used in the match, and this one belongs to Jeremy Hastings. Great he, reactor. He's a good reactor. Hastily Thank you, Christian. Yay! You. Thank you, Jeremy Hastings. We appreciate your support. All right, here we go. Four questions in the realm of Tim Burton films. Mark. You're welcome. Right, You're welcome. The world of Tim Burton's imagination. Wow. In Big Fish, what actor plays the elderly version of Ewan McGregor's character? Albert Finney. Two points. Yeah. He does. I feel so happy now. Yay, me! Oh, yes! A book named The Handbook for the Recently War. Deceased. Two points. And Draco hitting the categories pretty good out here. Coming we would, back. We would not have accepted recently diseased. Your question <laughs> is, what kind of salad does Joyce feed Edward in Edward Scissorhands? Oh, 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 oh. I'll know it as soon as I see it. Is it A, a Waldorf salad, B, a Cobb salad, Ambrosia. C, an Ambrosia salad, or D, Ambrosia a salad? salad? Ambrosia? One point. Yeah. One point. Yeah. Yep. Literally clawing his way back yep. into this yeah. match. Come on, Mark. Two more points up for grabs if Andreco can get it. He'll be trailing by just three, entering into round number three. Your last question is, what is the name of the judge that Alan Rickman Turpin. plays? Turpin. I did oh. not finish the question. That's very rude, but it is also correct. Yeah. <laughs> Three points. Mark and Draco pulling all 
Yay! I helped Mark Andreco come back! Yay! Exactly correct. So now we have a match here as we get to three point deficit only. If, if Mark actually comes back and wins this, I, I can I can celebrate because I help. He's got to do it first. That's, that's no small task. Hopefully, I don't cough up a lung before the match. Over. That could be the determining question in this match because Ethan Irwin still has a three point lead over Mark Andreco. You're going to be giving us your numbers from 1 to 20 first. What would the producer like? Uh, 1, 7, and 17. 1, 7, and 17. All odds no, 2, and decision. 7. Mark Andreco. 2, 3, and 5. 2, 3. Yay! Five. You got 2. If you get 2, you win. Andreco here with his of course, that's just something I made up. 2 pointer, two pointer to get within 1. Mark Andreco, you chose category number two. That's Sandra Bullock. Oh, I love her. <laughs> what She's had a pretty good career. Sandra Bullock from in the proposal. Um, Canada. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> that was totally not a fakey. That, that was, was a full blown. All right, so no, total fake out. Lead here. You had us all going, Mark. <laughs> By the time this airs, who knows? <laughs> All right. First lead. First lead here. And now you have the category, Mark. You chose three. You chose three. All right. Mark, what is the one word term? What is the category? Oh, I'm sorry. Category is, <laughs> oh. category is new release. You done goof, Christian. What is the one word term for the consciousness of the mind in Ghost in the Shell? Hmm. I'm guessing it's not anchovies, armadillo, aardvark. Um, five, four. Repeat the question. What is the one Pepsi. Word term for the consciousness of the mind in Ghost in the Shell? Ramen. Ghost. Correct. For three points. <laughs> Ghost in Ghost in the Shell? Is that why it's called Ghost in the Shell? Sometimes the obvious answer is the right answer. Ow! There you go. Christian, now I'm gonna ask Ethan his question. As soon as I'm done leaving, a nasty comment about Mark Andreco making it all political. Ethan, <laughs> your question. Don't go on his Facebook page. You chose uh, the number one because that's what you believe you are. You are indeed the favorite. That corresponds to your two-point question in the world of family films. Great, let's do it. Yeah. In family films, your question is: In the Paddington films, what is Paddington's favorite food? Marshmallows. Five, four, three, two, one. Repeat it. I said repeat. Too late. Too late. Fine. Too Fine. late. The answer I was, was going to say, I thought he marmalade gave an answer. Marmalade sandwiches. Oh, oh marmalade. marmalade. Well, I was close. It started with an M. Ethan here if, if he hits his three, he to take the lead. All right, now, Ethan, you and they taste almost the same. Three point question. Not really. Number seven. God. Disregard and that. And the number of Joe Theismann corresponds up here to Angelina Jolie. Great. Why does it always got to be about Joe Theismann? Her personal life I, why can't it be about, um... Name the critically panned, yet gold-nominated film starring Angelina Jolie and Johnny Depp traveling by train to Venice. The Tourist. Three points, and he's back in the lead, Christian, where he feels most comfortable. All right. And so now we go to Mark Andreco, who needs to hit the five-pointer. Mark needs to hit the five-pointer. If he hits it, it bounces back to Ethan. If he misses it, Ethan will go on to play Bibiani for the vacant singles championship. All right, here we go. Mark, you chose Thriller. You chose Thriller. The song? The category. 
<laughs> we wish it's the song. Of a powerful gang leader in New York City that goes by Cyrus serves as the inciting incident of which 70s action thriller? Cyrus, Cyrus, where have I heard that name? Five, four, oh. three. Repeat the question. Frick. The murder of a powerful gang leader in New York City that goes by Cyrus serves. Oh, the Warriors. Correct. Oh. Now, yeah. I'm just like Mark, of course. It's the Warriors. This has been a really good match too. The crowd, Christian having to quiet the crowd as though they were children in the back seat acting up. He's it, going like that freaking duck in the it, Warner Brothers it. shorts. Ah, shut up! And Draco will get his rematch with Bibiani. Who? All right, here we go. Just nervous reading this question, Christian, because the question is super easy. <laughs> <laughs> Your question comes from the world of. Disney movies. Oh, I was hoping you'd do the films of Ethan Irwin, but that's fine. <laughs> well, that'd be slightly cheating. He wrote that anyway. <laughs> Ethan, your question. Okay. For five points, the win, and the right to play William Bibiani for the belt. Name all three darling children from Disney's Peter Pan. Wendy. Oh, crud up. Uh, Wendy, John. Five, four. Repeat the question. Name the Just three the darling one. children from John. Disney's Peter Pan. Oh, Wendy, John, and Joseph. Might. Five, four, three, two. Repeat again. Name the oh, three boy. darling children from Disney's Peter Pan. Five. Yeah, Richard and Steven. And your winner! Oh. He did it! And I held! Yay! That's right. I'm not going to do like those people at fast food places when it's birthday. I can't stand those people. I know it's your job, but I just can't do it. You ever do that on my birthday, I'm running out the door. Thanks to me! Me! Mark and Draco having a phenomenal second and third round, and Mark and Draco is going up against Bibiani for the title. Just something about that confident stroll he had there. He understated going up to the wheel in the second round. He spun Tim Burton. He probably should write Jeremy Hastings a letter of thank you, our Patreon supporter, because he wanted that slice on the wheel, and Draco certainly wanted that slice. Got him back in. Well, that's all right. I'm an admin on his on his uh, fan page, so he he doesn't have to go far to find me. Basketball number twenty-two in a victorious effort. Right, and, he, so and he picked two. He picked number two. That's why he won. The winner, the android, Mark and Draco. Yeah, everything, everything just seemed to go right. All you gotta do is follow JTH's rules to live by. Always pick two. My version of proof. You pick two and you win. And this is the last thing I'm thinking before I pass on, because that I, I honestly thought. Ethan is such a good player and has such a wide depth of knowledge and is so unflappable. If that if that was a different category than Disney in the last question, I, it would be him here. Let's be honest, though. You came in here today and you were just so down on yourself and you were you, you said it in the beginning. Let's get this over with. Well, I think I said what everybody was thinking. I mean, I'm no, no, that's not being falsely humble. I mean, on, on paper, Ethan is a really damn good champion. That was once again, it's why the, it's why this game is so much fun. The wheel and the random questions in the final round, they can make they can ch change the dynamic substantially. You were down ten points when you were really yes. 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you can't see the scoreboard. No, I, I could, but I wasn't even. I, when you're up there, you don't see anything, you know. So you were down ten points going into the second oh, round. Well, I'm gonna brag. Ten points. <laughs> Fuck Ethan Irwin. <laughs> <laughs> That was easy. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> then you spun Tim Burton, and you were just on fire, electric the rest of the round. And then you got to round three, and I feel like you sort of used the Stacy Howard method. Which is what? Just guessing your ass off. No, I, I thought. You know, I thought about it. That's where I'm glad we have the repeat the question because that helped me. That helped me both times. It didn't help me with Wallace Shawn because I haven't seen Princess Bride in 30 years. But uh, but with with the first question or with Ghost in the Shell, I was like, I don't know any of that and then I thought oh the title's Ghost in the Shell Shell must refer so maybe it's obviously what it is and it was <laughs> so the scientific method works listen to your teachers Greg Tool. <laughs> and Emma you are absolutely beaming over there tell me what does this win mean to the Fight Club maybe he stepped into the multiverse the, Club, the third member of the Fight Club is now going to have a shot at the championship I mean and again, I, I, I said it before the match, third time is the charm, and I really think that Mark Andreco is destined to come out on top this time. Look, he was nervous going into the match today, with good reason. Ethan Irwin is an incredible competitor, but there was one glimmer of hope for me, which was the fact that this now means that Andreco is going to get to have that rematch with William Bibiani, and he has wanted that for a long time. And <laughs> there he is. Speak to the devil. Of William Bibiani. Oh, may I please? Thank you. Yeah, you're not the only one who's wanted that rematch. You and me, we had something magical. We had the best damn match in the history of the Schmodown, and I want another one, and I want that championship. Okay, I'm not serious, Jabber. It wasn't the best match because I lost. It will be the best match when I win. It was the best match for me. Tell. It was the best match for me. Yeah, uh, I don't care. Oh. <laughs> That's that's very unfortunate because I want this. This would be nice for me. Look, look you can do all your theatrics and your shtick here, and I'm waiting for you to start juggling flaming torches. <gasps> Ooh, to I should have brought there. flaming torches. But when it comes down to knowledge, I'm really good at this third round, as I proved here. How are your th what's your third round record again? Well, I usually don't have to get there anymore <laughs> because I'm so good. You see, because you not not so good. You have bad and everything what's, bad. What's my record? I don't actually know or care because your record against me is really not good. Six and two. Your record against me. Six and two? Yeah. 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 I want the championship. Oh, here you go. Done. So much Bibs out. This guy's going to have an aneurysm. I hope, he, I hope he makes it till I beat him. Ethan, that match is absolutely <laughs> nothing to hang your head about. I mean, you hung in there till the very end, but I know that's got to feel disappointing to you. Yeah, I uh, I think I was as surprised as anybody. It was, uh, you know, look, that was a uh, that was a tough one, and look, you, you get the questions you get, and you only know what you know. But look, Andreco did a good job. He had I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised by some of the stuff that he knew, um, and it didn't go the way I wanted. It didn't go the way I thought it was going to go for sure, but. Hey, that happens. And also, I just talked to um, the people who are going to actually buy Collider, and they're going to tear down this entire building anyway, so it's fine. So, I'm sure you'll, I'm sure you, you'll land on your feet. I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> so, so round one and round two, you absolutely destroyed. And then you got to round three, and obviously, that's kind of where the wheels fell off. Yeah, I know. I, I gotta say, family films are, are apparently not, not what I know. So yeah, I know it was tough, and they were uh, the questions I got were for films that I have not seen. So I just yeah, I don't know. So obviously, you know, we've heard the big announcement. You will be teaming up with the Machine in Anarchy, and your manager will be none other than Jay Washington. This is pretty exciting news for you, right? What? Jay Washington? This is brand new news to me. I guess it's just something I'm gonna have to get. Oh, pleasure to meet you. Oh hi, hey. Well, you seem like a swell guy. This is exciting. Listen, listen. You should be honored to be with me and Janine. You should be just so ecstatic. You get to be with the potential rookie of the year. I mean, you had a chance, but you lost. But listen, we get to make you so much better around here, especially when we help you to win this whole tournament. We're all doing each other a favor. You're going to love it. I might even get you a Viper Squad shirt or a tattoo. You did? Have a good one. Hi. Who was that? Who's that? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go with the shirt if that's the choice. But yeah, <laughs> I'm, excited. I'm super excited about pairing up with Janine. I actually feel like we're, we really complement each other in terms of our knowledge. 
So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great. Please don't get a Viper Squad tram stamp. We'll see. Well, no surprise there. I've already proposed the name. Janine and Ethan Barr. B-A-R. Badass rookies. They both want this matchup. And Draco wants the rematch. Bibiani wants to prove he can do it again. And this time, full circle for the title. As for Ethan Irwin, he wants to get right back in there and do it all over again. He's ready for the he's ready for the team tournament now. He's ready to take the, the anarchy, which is coming up not too long from now. But Ethan played a hell of a match. He just got knocked off of that pedestal this time around. Yeah, I mean, you got to wonder. We talked about at the top of the match, Ethan Irwin, such a striking effort in his first couple matches. There's only one way to go, and it's down. Now, he'll probably retreat to his palatial ivory tower mansion that all producers in Hollywood have. Rethink his strategy, lick his wounds, come back strong. Like John Peters. Players. But now, you and I get to prep for one of the biggest matchups in the history of the movie trivia, Schmodown, and that would be Mark Andreco versus William Bibiani for Sam Levine's jewels. Or it, it's not not Sam Levine's jewels anymore. Is it not? It is not Did anymore. I read that wrong? It is off the table now. <laughs> it is a vacant championship, and one of those guys, either the Android or the Beast, will be your new movie trivia schmodown <laughs> champion. My God, mm -hmm. unbelievable. And remember, you guys have a chance to mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. Toasty. Get your ticket live. now, September 8th, live. See Dan Merle compete live and also go and check out Jason Inman as he defends the championship against, against the Chance winner. Ellison. The question mark gives it away. Two, that's Christian Harloff. I'm Mark Ellis. Make sure you guys check out the Schmodown Patreon. You heard some patrons' names read today. You could be one of those. Join the Schmodown Patreon. Figure out which tier is right for you. Join Patreon. You could be me. Why would you want that? Schmodown Facebook page, of which I am proud to say I am a member call this one of the matches of the year oh so far absolutely is the year over already dear god i need to be <laughs> What's up, Schmodown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Schmodown breakdown. And the winner, Ethan Irwin, looking to become the eighth player in singles league history to go 4 and 0, oh, but he was up against Mark and Draco, who's just trying to get his winning streak to three wins and get that rematch with Bibiani. To start things off, Ethan went perfect in the first round, including the bonus. With that performance, his first round accuracy this season is 85%. As for Andreco, he started with a pedestrian five points. In Andreco's six matches in the Q8 era, he has scored more than five points just twice. Into the second round, things got much more competitive as Ethan put up six points, while Andreco countered with seven of his own, and Ethan's lead stood at three as we head into the final round. Things fell apart for Ethan Irwin in the final round, going one of three, whereas Andreco, he went three for three for the full ten points, it's just the second time this season a player has done that, and interestingly enough, that other player is Ethan Irwin. Not only is this Andreco's third straight win, it is also his third comeback win in his career, the most of any player. Going inside the numbers, let's look at Ethan Irwin. Going back to his first round, it was the fourth perfect round of the year in the singles league, and even more surprisingly, he's the third of the four players to lose their match after having a perfect first round. At the end of the also, day, Ethan Irwin answered... Frank, if you ever see this, can we get a uh, stat check of how many times the players won despite having a lower accuracy a rate? Obviously, the, the possible points is higher, but a lower accuracy of uh, questions correct. How many times does that happen? You'll never see this, Frank, but, you know, just I'm just wondering. It's only the second time a player this season with a lower accuracy rate has won their match. If you want to find out all the stats, well, I, I guess you already looked that up, so I, you don't have to worry about watching this anymore. On the Collider Podcast Network on YouTube and the Collider Factory Podcast feed. This has been your Schmoe Down Breakdown. Thank you, Frankie Stats Janish, for already looking up the stats that I asked you to look up because I couldn't wait 15 seconds. Oh, well. But uh, anyway, Marky and Draco wins. Thanks to me. Yay! He got my category. He picked number two. Win, 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 win. Except if I'm playing, because if I'm playing, I lose in pitiful fashion. But uh, so yeah, Bibiani and Draco too. 
a match that I've been very much looking forward to and hoping for for a very long time, as I said at the very beginning of the video. If you actually bothered to come all the way here, you would already have uh, heard me talk about that. But um, it's going to be hard to pick a winner because I like both guys. Um, obviously, a big fan of Bibbs. And as I said, I'm an admin on Andreco's fan page. So it would be hard to have rooting interest for either one. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna, gonna have to plead the fifth and flip a coin and, and not tell you what, what it lands on when, when it happens. So, uh, ultimately it was a great match. Um, Ethan Irwin was, uh, was knocked off. That was something that I don't think a lot of people are going to see coming, but, uh, Mark Andreco is a really good player, so it really shouldn't shock anybody. Um, but really good match. Um, and obviously because I, I was... Name dropped. I was name dropped in this. So, so much rewatchability for me. Of course, there, there would be uh, a lot of rewatchability even if my name was never dropped. And you never knew who I was. But, um, yeah, all in all, great match. Looking forward to Friday where hopefully we're going to have another great match. The Inner Geekdom Finals between Mara Kanopic and Mike Kalinowski. Can't wait for that. So, with that being said, that's going to do it for this edition of JTH Reacts to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and always watch their content first. It's the right thing to do. You can follow me on Twitter at WWEJTH1. Maybe I'll, I'll get two more followers after getting name dropped on Schmodown this week. Um, follow the official Movie Trivia Schmodown Twitter page at the Schmodown. Join the official Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page. And if you can, of course, become a Patreon supporter to the Schmodown. And you could be like me. Well, not like me. Just be a, you know, a, a Patreon supporter. But... With that being said, that's going to do it for JTH Reacts to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. This is JTH. Until next time, thank you for watching, and I bid you adieu-adieu.